Designing an assessment in such a way that motivates and challenges students to complete the work for themselves can help ensure good academic integrity. Motivating students through things like competition and rewards can incentivize them to complete work themselves and not to breach academic integrity standards. Let's look at how you might do this by taking DCU's virtual learning environment Loop as an example. In Loop, students can contribute content for one another to see in a variety of ways. Let's look at the glossary activity to give them this opportunity. On your Loop course page, click Turn Editing On, scroll to a particular section of the page and click Add an Activity or Resource and choose the Glossary activity. We're going to use this glossary as a collective annotated bibliography where each student needs to enter a summary of a reading of their choice. Their name and date of entry will be associated with their summary so they will be motivated to complete the task in good time to get ahead of their peers. Enter a name for the glossary in the name field. Also enter a description in the description field. Work your way down through the settings. Most of the default settings are fine to retain unless you have a particular reason for altering them. I'm going to change the appearance to full with author so each entry displays the author's details. And in this instance I want to enable the rating of glossary entries so I'm going to choose the aggregate type of average of ratings and I'm going to use a grading scale rather than a numerical value up to 100. And I have a scale here available to me called acceptable, good, very good. You can also use activity completion to indicate to the students that they are deemed to have completed the task if they have viewed the activity, if they have received a grade from the lecturer, and if they have created one or two or three or more entries, for example. Click Save and Return to Course when finished. The glossary is now available on the course page. Let's look at the glossary from the student point of view. When students click to access the glossary, they can browse all the entries by using the lettered index. But we don't have any entries yet, so let's get started by clicking Add an Entry. The student should use the Concept field for the name of their entry and the Definition field for the body of their entry. Students can also use the keyword field to add some important related terms. Students click Save Changes when done. As the glossary fills up with student entries, you as the lecturer can go in and browse the work in progress. Useful ways to browse the glossary include by alphabet, by date, or by author. Having read one of the entries, you can use the Ratings drop-down menu to select the rating you wish to give the student. It would be useful for students if you gave some feedback to them on their entries. You can do this by allowing comments on glossary entries. Go to Edit Settings, Entries, and choose to allow comments on entries. Click Save and Display. Leave a comment by clicking on Comments and typing in the Add a Comment field. And then clicking Save Comment. You could take a slightly different approach and rate entries based on when students created them. So those that did the task first get a high rating and those that lag behind get a low rating. 
You could also put students in groups to write entries and have one student in each group post it on their behalf, thereby creating competition between the groups. At one of its most basic levels, the glossary is a tool that allows students to create content that others can view, comment upon and rate. It can be used for a variety of different tasks to promote engagement and authentic student contributions.